everyone and welcome to another episode of Riverdale Recap. This is Season 3, Episode 5, Chapter 45, The Great Escape. Uh, I don't know if this is referencing a specific book or movie, but when I heard the title, I immediately thought of the wonderful, wonderful Gwen Stefani and Akon song, The Great Escape. That could escape and recreate a place that's my own world. Uh, and on and on as it goes on. And the more I think about it, the more fitting it is for this show. So I really hope that's what the title was referencing. <laughs> Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. But how they set up this episode to be described is that it is a great escape and also a great rescue launched by the leading women of Riverdale. Veronica wants to break Archie out of prison and Betty wants to save Jughead from his own delusions while playing griffins and gargoyles. That's the basic premise of this episode and only one of those things actually gets accomplished through this episode. So we pick up almost exactly where we left off last episode. We actually start a little bit before and we see Jughead and the Serpents preparing and playing their game and initially their quest fails. But luckily enough, uh, their game actually happens to parallel with what is happening in the actual episode, which is very strange and old times in at the end uh, with the big plot point that it seems to be that Griffins and Gargo is the game and Riverdale itself uh, seems to be connected. Uh, and we get a first little bit of this in the beginning. Betty's talking to Jughead and he mentions that, that the world in Griffins and Gargoyles is called Elderbear or Eldervar, which is uh, an anagram for Riverdale and that's why they can't find any information on it beyond the town itself because they seem to be intrinsically connected. Now Jughead is turning into a true believer of the game. He seems a little off his rocker uh, and he believes that you know, whatever's going on, it's all connected. He just has to dig deeper into the game, keep going, and ascend to the next level, and the next level, and the next level, and he'll eventually find out what's going on. And that's Jughead's master plan into how he's going to figure out exactly what's going on with this game. And we see that continue on throughout the episode. Jughead talks with his dad, you know, tries to get to the bottom of what happened with FP. And FP finds out that Alice spilled the beans to Betty about what kind of happened back in the past, which they weren't supposed to reveal, but does Alice ever play by the rules? No. And FP just seems to want to try and protect his son and not want the history to repeat itself. But we all know Jughead has a mind of his own and is going to do whatever he <laughs> wants to do, no matter who tells him otherwise, whether it's his dad or his girlfriend or whoever, he's not really going to listen. It's Jughead Jones. Jughead will also not listen to the serpents at all. Sweet Pam Fangs are, they're on a little trip. They're riding high off of playing Griffin and Gargoyles. They feel invincible. And they decide to just fling arrows everywhere when they don't know diddly squat about archery. And Tony and Cheryl are pissed. And they go to Jughead and are basically like, settle, settle this petty squabble right now. And Jughead goes like full crazy mode. <laughs> and he literally takes a can, puts it on his head, and tells Arrow to sh <laughs> tells Cheryl to shoot the arrow above on the can above his head, which could have ended very badly, but I guess Jughead has faith in people, and he is the game master of this little game that the serpents are playing, so he feels very confident about all this, and he was right in the end, and he kind of tells Sweet Pea and Fangs, like, you're a little advanced when I tell you to, because I'm the game master, and you'll have your chance to prove yourself, but you gotta wait. It was a verbal lashing for the ages, I must say. <laughs> now, while Jughead's going full tilt, Betty is just not here for it. She's like, um, we have a solid lead right now, and you want to talk about fantasy living in this world. So Betty decides she's going to go off on her own course, and just, like, they can do whatever they want playing the game right now. She's taking another course. So she decides to tell Reggie, Josie, and Kevin, who are my new favorite trio on this show, I want more from them. I really enjoy it. Betty tells them exactly what happened and that their parents are all a part of this game and Reggie, who says the most Reggie thing ever so far, goes essentially, my dad probably never dressed up. That's such a nerd thing. We're not nerds. I'm not a nerd. 
It was very much that was the vibe I got. And I'm gonna dig really deep into Reggie for a moment because I enjoy Reggie and I like Reggie. And his home life does not seem fabulous either because later on when Reggie decides to confront his dad, he gets a black eye for it. What the hell? So his dad's a jerk um, and he's terrible. And this is why Reggie probably has all this macho male bravado is because of this BS. Protect Reggie. Also protect all these children, all these teenagers, because they don't deserve any of this. But back to the topic at hand, after Betty does a little convincing, Josie and Kevin and Reggie all kind of seem to be on board with what happened in the past. So far so that when Josie and Kevin are having a little family time with Sierra, Josie's mom, and Tom, Kevin's dad, uh, they kind of try and question a little bit, say like, oh, what were you like in high school? When do you, do you guys meet? Uh, to try and find out more about Griffin the Gargoyles. And, well, Sierra and Tom do not give any answers. They seem to have very carefully rehearsed this exact uh, line of questioning, and they kind of breeze past it. Uh, and also embellish the truth a little bit. Uh, but... Also, what was apparently revealed in that scene that we learned out later is that Sierra and Tom are planning on getting married! I'm excited for a Riverdale wedding, an actual Riverdale wedding, and I hope every show needs a wedding. This is gonna be Riverdale's wedding. Will it happen by the end of the season? My guess is yes, because they dropped it this early. So, I'm excited and there's gonna be some drama at this wedding. One of the other interesting things I noticed about this episode is that there was no mention of the farm this episode. And that plot line seems to be getting dropped a little bit. I'm sure they will pick it back up. And maybe we'll get to more of that in the second half of the season. Because, or it'll turn out if it's in somehow connected with Griffin and Gargoyles. My thought is right now, it's not connected with Griffins and Gargoyles. Especially because the farm was outside of Riverdale. And this game seems to be contained within Riverdale. So the farm is just living their best lives. And that might be the big plot for the second half of the season is exactly what's going on in the farm because right now Griffin the Gargoyles is really taking the precedent. Um, and if that's the case, I'm glad they kind of started setting it up early and I hope they kind of continue placing those threads uh, through the rest of the episodes in mid-season because I'm not exactly sure how long the Griffin and Gargoyle plot is going to go on. Though currently I have no idea who the Gargoyle King could be or how this game all play, comes into play and how it's all going to turn out to be not some sort of supernatural reasoning for this because uh, maybe it would be considered a cheap way out to make it be some sort of supernatural thing and maybe it would really take the show in a too far off direction but I feel like it would make so much sense and Yes, then it would really connect it with the chilling adventures of Sabrina by having some sort of magic or some kind of occult or supernatural stuff being crossed over into Riverdale, but it would also fit so perfectly. Let me know your thoughts on that. So that was the investigation and the Griffin the Gargoyles heavy plot for the most part in this episode. The other half of things that's going on is Veronica wants to break Archie out of prison. And this is really our main plot line for this episode. This is the A plot. First we see Archie try to attempt to break out with some of the other members of the fighting squad. Uh, you know, like Baby Teeth, all the rest of them, Joaquin. And they try and break out through this little corner of fence. But they get caught by the guards and they are getting shot with rubber bullets. And Archie is trying to protect Joaquin because he's still hurt from all that fighting stuff. But unfortunately, their breakout's unsuccessful. Now, the next time we see Archie, I almost done lost my mind. We weren't even 10 minutes into the episode. Not even. Maybe not even 5 minutes into the episode. And Archie gets branded. This was some Outlander Season 1 stuff. I... <laughs> Like, my mom walked in at that point. Like, she came to me and she's like, oh, what's up? What's going on? And I was just like, I don't, I don't know what's happening. But I'm freaking out. Honestly, poor Archie has been through enough comeuppance for the BS he pulled last season. And I'm ready for him to just be free and happy and not have to deal with the BS. 
let's send Archie to a sanctuary, because that's what he deserves right now. Also, Hiram and Veronica's feud is kind of coming to a boiling point. Veronica is really not having it with Hiram, who just keeps kind of pushing her buttons about Archie, and both of their little obsession with him is not turning out so well as Hermione will tell you at the end of this episode. Veronica really wants to get to the bottom of what's happening with Archie, especially because she hasn't had contact with him in a really long time because of all the BS that's going on. She has no idea he's in a fight club until one of her mob hookup friends, Elio, comes in and lets her in on the secret. He takes her as his date to the fighting ring and she sees Archie there forced into a child fighting ring and she is not happy but she plays it cool, she doesn't freak out and she goes back to her friend and she's like it's time to have a plan. So Archie gives her the kind of details that sets all the plans into motion. In fact he tells her actually a drain in the bottom of this fighting hole and that's the way they're planning to get him out. And she gathers the powers of Betty. Josie, Kevin, and Reggie to all come together to create a fantastical rescue team for Archie. And she's got the inside details on it. Veronica did a spectacular job organizing all of this this episode and kind of rallying the troops. I think she did an absolutely fabulous job. Points to Veronica and also points to Veronica for that scene earlier. She went to go comfort her man, went to go see him, tell him, I'm breaking you out, baby, and he lifted her up and they met and they had a grand old time. So we see the plan sort of start to get go into play. We don't exactly know what it's going to pan out to be, which I thought was really good because it left an air of mystery going on there. But we see Josie, Reggie, and Kevin working in the lab on some sort of thing that's going to help out later. Betty kind of is setting up another plot another trap to make sure everything goes smoothly, kind of setting up a backup, and they really planned this out, and I think they did a fantastic job, and as we see at the end, it's successful. But before we can follow through with that, Betty goes to talk to Jughead to try and recruit him to help out with this mission and save Archie, but Jug is off the deep end and is thinking about it as a mission and as a quest for his Griffins and Gargoyles game, and Betty is just like, she turns into mom mode for a second and she's like, you know what, stay here, please stay out of trouble, I'm going to deal with this, I'm going to be the boss today, and I'm taking your bike. That's your punishment for being a fool. Goodbye. She leaves him there, she goes off, and the plan to rescue Archie comes into full motion. Everything's going smoothly at first. Archie is ready to, you know, start his fight. He's ready to go on and get out there. He's there with Joaquin and he tells Joaquin, Joaquin, this is what I'm doing and no matter what happens, I'm going to come back for you because I don't leave people behind because I'm not a fake jerk. I'm not fake. Archie's not fake. Can you tell I'm pressed about Joaquin, y'all? Because I'm pressed about Joaquin. Because what does this fool do? Kisses Archie, tricks him, and stabs him in some kind of a tu brute twist. This is not Julius Caesar. He full on stabs Archie and throws him to the mad dog in the ring. And that was a twist of twists. Mad dog has returned to fight Archie. Um, I was very glad to see that mad dog wasn't dead. We all knew he wasn't dead, but what did they do with him in the meantime? Because I hope this boy was not tortured. Cause when they started fighting, like he was like, mad dog, where have you been? And I was just like, is this a winter soldier situation? Have they wiped his brain? Like I know him and Archie do not have a Steve Rogers, Bucky Barnes connection, but it was a little hint of that and I was here for it because Mad Dog is the best. Joaquin, fake bitch, he can go over there. Mad Dog can stay right here. He's the best. We want good things for Mad Dog. Now luckily, Veronica and Reggie actually get in to see this fight. They ran into a little trouble at the door. They're there posing as kind of a couple on a date, kind of looking it out. And at first, they try and give a code word, and it turns out they change the code word every week. You would think Veronica would think of this because she owns a speakeasy, and don't they ever change the password? But I digress. She plays it off very, very well. And she uses an intimidation uh, tactic to do this. Now, one of the interesting things as we see this plot to rescue Archie is happening, we also see the serpents playing a round of 
griffins and gargoyles and whatever they're doing in this game is actually being reflected in what's happening in the episode and it seems like it's not some weird bizarre coincidence because they mention this at the end and there's also the thing about the red paladin which we'll get into in a little bit so Mad Dog and Archie are proceeding to start their fight. Archie's bleeding out on his side and he's doing his best to keep this fight up and him and Mad Dog are kind of going at it and soon Mad Dog starts to talk and kind of loosen up and they kind of both figure out what's going on there. So while this is continuing on in the fight, Betty is outside making sure everything's going smoothly. She messes with those cars to make sure they can't run and come off after them. Girl was on it. Betty was a V and was an MVP of this. They were all doing very well. Um, actually, I think the only person, uh, part of this ragtag group that was not being an MVP was Kevin. And that's because when Kevin finds out that the grate is locked that from the tunnel that Archie's supposed to come out of, he ends up seeing Joaquin, which nobody expected that to happen, but I'm actually really glad it did and kind of, it tied things up very nicely. So kudos writers for doing that. But he sees Joaquin and Joaquin says that he had to do this. He had to stab Archie because the warden told him to. The warden's essentially their game master and it seems like this game is also being played in the juvie, which is crazy. Um, so Kevin sees Joaquin. Joaquin says he's in with a new gang, which makes me think it's whatever the squad that's playing Griffin and Gargoyles in juvie. And he runs off and he tells Kevin that Kevin should run off too. And Kevin wants to run after Joaquin because, one, that's his, like, ex-lover that he kind of sort of didn't really get a chance to get over because they ended things because Joaquin had to leave because he decided to participate in a murder cover-up. Murder cover-up. Let's clarify. And Kevin's about to run off, but at least he waits till Betty gets there. And Betty is here to save the day and pick the lock to make sure Archie gets out. She is on her A-game. And while Betty's on her aim game inside, Josie's on her A game as well. She hears them talking about the fight and all the guards have seemed to bet against Archie this time. So they obviously have some inside knowledge about what's going on. I hate these guards and they're terrible. And while Veronica's walking around, they're ready, just about ready to set their plan into motion. Lo and behold, who is there for this fight? Hiram Lodge. He's obviously here to witness Archie's death because he's a terrible Frickin' person. Just the Hiram hate boils within you and with each episode it grows because he doesn't do anything at all to make himself even a little better. Nothing. And I really liked in Griffins and Gargoyles that he was this horrible, terrible, like slimy beast um, because that was fitting and it was great because Hiram deserves a little comeuppance. Even if he can't hear it, it's just, it's satisfying to hear. Veronica steps on his foot and is like, screw you, daddy, I do what I want. And then the plan all kicks off and Josie and Reggie and her all throw these like smoke canisters to kind of shroud the makeshift ring in the pool so that they can't see what's happening. And Mad Dog tells Archie to go, Archie to run. And Archie wants Mad Dog to come with him because they're bros for life now. <laughs> And I really hope they get to reunite after happily together. Mad Dog says he can't fit through the grate. He tells Archie to go and that he's going to hold off the guards because Mad Dog is an OG. All right, Mad Dog's an OG. And just in the nick of time, Archie shows up at the grate. Betty just finishes unlocking it and he tumbles out. This is a really sweet moment because I do really enjoy Archie and Betty as good friends. And I thought this was a really cute little scene between them. She gets him out and she notices that he's actually bleeding. And she has a change of clothes for him. So we think. So we think. And they're ready to ride off to safety. So we cut back to inside. The warden is PO'd because his prisoner left. You know, he has a little screaming moment. It's whatever. And they go to find and hunt down Archie. So they go outside to the cars. And oh, <laughs> such a shame. The warden's car won't start. I wonder how that happened. So Betty embarks off on a chase she has Archie behind her on the motorcycle but the guards are coming up quickly 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 on their tail 
This was a great moment, just visually watching it and also having it cut with the narration of the game and the serpents are so into the quest that's happening and they want it to succeed, they want to get the red paladin out and then it's also being intercut with are they going to get him, are they not, are they going to get him and you think they're going to get away and then they come to a police blockade and they get off the bike and you think Archie's going to be captured but ha ha! It was a decoy all along, and it was really Kevin as the decoy on the back of the bike, which was an amazing little trick there that they did. Like, they had me going. This episode was very masterfully crafted, and I really had a good time watching it. I think they did a fantastic job with this episode. So kudos to the writing staff on this. Kudos to this season so far, because each episode has been exceptional. So while Betty and Kevin were riding off into the forest as a distraction, Veronica, Reggie, and Josie took Archie and brought him to the car on another side. So they're able to make a great getaway, or so we hope, because while we know that Archie has mostly been rescued, the serpents don't know. So Fangs, Sweet Pea, Cheryl, and Tony are all waiting with bated breath because they don't know if Archie made it out. And neither did Jughead because he had hoped that by the end of their telling of the quest that they would have known for sure if they finished rescuing the Red Paladin. It only takes a moment because there's a knock on the bunker and down comes Archie Andrews, safe and sound, hidden away in the bunker. It was such a satisfying like victory seeing Archie there and the Red Paladin had been saved. When Kevin and Betty were doing the decoy though, they actually end up meeting up with the warden at this blockade and the warden asks, where's the Red Paladin? Where's the Red Paladin? Who we know is Archie. So I wonder how all of these separate games connect because it seems that somehow they are connecting. And while one person's quest might succeed, as in, the ju as in Jughead's and the Serpent's quest in this case happened to triumph, while the warden's game, where he was supposed to kill the Red Paladin, didn't work out at all. And as we see at the end, he gets his. Tony patches Archie up. The whole gang's there. Josie, Reggie, Kevin, Veronica, Archie, Betty, Jughead, Fangs, Sweet Pea, Cheryl and Tony, so that's like a whole 11 people, I believe, agree to the secret and the pact that no one's going to know about this escape, no one knows about the bunker, and they're all going to keep Archie's whereabouts a secret to protect him. And I thought it was really interesting that this episode ended with the pact and so did last episode, The Midnight Club. So that's kind of an interesting little uh, parallel there that I thought was kind of cute. While Archie's in the bunker, they also discover his brand. Uh, and we can see now that the brand was actually one of the runes from the game and that's how they kind of make the connection that something was going on with the warden and that the game of Griffins and Gargoyles really is bigger than just a little game, that it seems. It spans the entire town. Veronica finally heads home, and oh boy is her mom pissed. Hermione is yelling at Hiram, saying, an underground fighting ring, all this stuff. You know, I took a donation from this guy, like how is she gonna look as the mayor? That it's now gonna be out in the public that there was a fighting ring at the Juvie. That's not going to look very good. And Hermione says something interesting. She says that Veronica and Hiram's obsession with Archie is going to be the destruction of their family. And I think that's very true at this point. As far as we know, Archie is really what's tearing their family apart. I think if breaking up with Archie would mean that he would be safe and her father would stop messing with him, I do think potentially that Veronica might do it at some point. Um, especially if the idea of her family comes in more. But Hermione decides to make a little trip to the prison to try and settle the soul down. So get another little scene of Reggie, Josie, and Kevin and they're hanging out in Pops. They're all kind of like coming down from what happened tonight and they're like, they're like, oh, can you believe it? Oh my God, we rescued him. But they're all trying to keep it hushed and everything and there are Pops having some milkshakes and everything's going well so far. They're keeping it under wraps and then there's a news bulletin seemingly over the radio. Uh, very Riverdale, of course, which is that Archibald Andrews, convicted murderer, has escaped prison. And what a shock it is. 
but now the cat's out of the bag, so at least the public knows that Archie's out there. So people are going to be looking for him. So these kids have a awful big secret to keep. We also get a little scene of Betty and Jughead watching Archie in the bunker. They're kind of talking over what's happening, and Betty's like, maybe the game is bigger. She kind of concedes to that a little bit, but she also sees that this is not a good path. And she is keeping her promise to her mother that she is not going to play the game, even when Jughead invites her to. So she tells him she'll keep watch over Archie tonight and that Jughead should go get some rest at home and Jughead agrees. So he decides to take off. We cut back to the warden in the prison and it turns out Hermione's coming to visit him and he says, yep, just a minute. But before Hermione can come in, we see a playing card that says kill the red paladin. So obviously someone gave this card to the warden or he drew it himself. And his game of griffins and gargoyles is coming to an end. He takes the blue chalice, he puts some cyanide in it, and he is going to ascend to the next level, it seems, because he drinks it, he drinks the fresh aid, and kills himself before Hermione can come in and talk to him. Goodbye, Warden Norton. We knew you not so well. One of the good things uh, Warden Norton did reveal this episode is how Archie ended up getting, getting framed for the murder, which could eventually help us down the line with getting Archie declared innocent, so then we don't have to worry about being on the run anymore. <laughs> As we see the Warden decline and fall in the game of Griffins and Gargoyles, we start to see Jughead ascend. As he's walking home from the bunker, he's making his way through the woods, and who does he see but the Gargoyle King himself in the branches. And Jughead, Jughead does not run. Nope, Jughead stays right where he is, and that my friends, is where we cut to black for this episode of Riverdale. This was another great episode in a season that's shaping up to be a, an absolutely fantastic one. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought of this episode. Who do you guys think the Gargoyle King could be? What do you think this whole game means? Is it all really connected? And how deep do you think it goes? If you like this episode of Riverdale Recap, feel free to give it a nice thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more, subscribe down below. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you have a great day, a great night, a great week, and peace.